here with Mike. Tuesday Talks with Mike and our sidekick, his sidekick, Freddie. Good morning, folks. Progress is not always good. Today, we're going to talk about the death of print media. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, nobody would have envisioned this, uh, especially those of us who write for a living uh, and were uh, used to seeing their material on paper. Uh, but the rise of the internet has pretty much killed off the print industry. Oh, it, it stumbles along here and there. Uh, people still print books because people want physical media. Uh, and people who are conversant with history insist on physical media because they know that this new technology with everything stored in the cloud or in a computer in your house could come crashing to a halt for any number of reasons, not the least of which is a giant electromagnetic pulse which will wipe out all memories on Earth, whether it's caused by a Chinese bomb or by a meteor. Uh, for those of us uh, uh, who write for a living, uh, nothing can compare to holding a book in my hands. What we've seen over the last uh, 20 or 30 years is bookstore after bookstore going out of business. I believe that Barnes & Noble is now only the only national bookstore that has physical structure and physical books. But those of us who read for a living love books, we collect books, and every one of us has a hundred books in our house we intend to read but haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, now those of us who work in, for comic books understand the special appeal of holding that comic in your hands uh, and entering a world completely, if it's a good comic, entering a world completely so that you're no longer aware of the artifice caused by pen and ink on paper and then coloring and then hand lettering. Uh, this rarely happens uh, with comics uh, and it's always rarely happens with comics because most comics are trash. There was a great science fiction writer named Theodore Sturgeon and, and he posited Sturgeon's rule. And Sturgeon's rule is 90% of everything is trash. And he was right, 90% of everything is trash. 90% of movies, 90% of TV shows, 90% of comics, they're just not very good. The people love them, so they're not going to give them up. Uh, now, what I miss the most are magazines. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you why. Here's a, a magazine Ann gets. <laughs> it's a thick magazine. It's very well put together. Uh, and uh, the ads, the ads in magazines used to be attractive. They were well designed. They were thoughtful. They had good art. But most of all, they were inobtrusive. And if you didn't like that ad, you could turn the page. Well, look what's happened to us now. We're all online, and you, you can't read anything online without fighting off 63 ads that creep onto the screen. And you notice when that ad covers the content you want to read, you look around for a way to get rid of it. There's usually a little X, but sometimes they hide the X. And sometimes when you find the X, and you chase it with your cursor, the X starts running away from you like a stray sheep or something. Uh, and there are other ads where, uh, I love these ads the best, is they have a little X in the corner and you click that on and, an, and another ad appears that says, why you no like ad? And then it gives you a choice of like five acceptable reasons. You can't tell them the real reason. You hate the ad because it covers content. And some of these ads say, Okay, it covers content. So I click on, it covers content. And then another ad appears that covers what you want to read and says, okay, we'll try not to show that ad in the future, but we're still covering your content. On the other hand, uh, te technology gives and technology takes away and technology has enabled ordinary people like me to talk to thousands of people all over the world uh, via the internet. Without Anne, I would not be able to do it because I'm not very tech wise, uh, but we're doing it right now. And I do intend to expand my reach uh, in the future. Uh, in the meantime, uh, back to comic books. Uh, comic books are never gonna die. And by that, I mean the physical medium will never die because people treasure those comics. Collectors treasure those comics. Uh, and uh, modern technology pays no attention to collectors. They just want to get that thing out there as, as fast and as effectively as possible. Uh, there are a number of greenies who say, well, this way we're saving the forests. 
is we don't have to print all that paper. Never mind that the force covering the United States today is greater than the force covering the United States when it was discovered by Columbus. One little trick, one little decision would end that argument forever, and that would be to legalize hemp. Hemp can be used for paper. You can raise two or three crops a year. It treads very lightly on the land. It produces paper 10 times the rate as fast as wood. I don't know why they haven't done it yet. Now you can you get hemp in practically every state to smoke and get high, but they haven't legalized hemp for printing, and I hope they do. Um, Freddie agrees with me. Freddie? Such a good boy. Okay, enough about Freddie. Okay, back to white print medium is dying. That's it, it's dead. Oh, okay, you're done. Okay, very good. Uh, any new reminders or things folks may want to know? Well, uh, folks, as you know, I'm going to be in Orlando in the first week of February to consult with the Ripiverse crew, for whom I've written a book. Uh, Florida Man versus Hogzilla is probably at the printer, even as we speak. And as usual, we will be f fulfilling ahead of schedule. Uh, and I can't wait to get started on the next book, which we will probably launch in March. It's a brand new Nexus graphic novel illustrated by Kelsey Shannon. It's just magnificent. Very good. And uh, are you going to be on any speaker panels in that Florida Comic Con? Or that you We're know going to have a big Ripiverse panel. I think it starts at 1030 in the morning. On Saturday? Yes. Okay. Okay, great. Any other Comic Cons that you will be at that folks can find you? I'll be at the Black Hills Comic Con at the end of June. Yeah, that will be fun. Nice. All right. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell. And reminder, we Mike has a Patreon account. Do you want to share about the Patreon account? Uh, the Patreon account probably contains a half million words that most people have never seen, including at least three novels that I wrote uh, and have not been able to publish. And that doesn't mean they're bad because anybody who reads my novels knows that I know what I'm doing. Uh, but publishers are very leery to take a chance on material these days. Uh, and uh, if the novel is a standalone novel, like Disco, about a boy and his dog, if it's not a series, they're not interested. Another one is a horror novel about a man who's found drowned to death in the middle of the Mojave Desert. And uh, the third one is uh, a brand new Nexus novel. Uh, it was due to be published by Wordfire Press, which is Kevin G. Anderson's imprint. Uh, but Kevin is so overwhelmed with his own writing these days that they're not publishing any new books. We may get around to it one of these days, but uh, it's not like I need to get that out there. I'm working on a lot of stuff. All right, and then weren't you offering your customers a special that if they sign up for Patreon? If you get... do sign up for Patreon, I'll send you a copy of The Architect. Which me, which is what? My horror graphic novel inspired by the life of Frank Lloyd Wright. You can look it up on Amazon. I don't think they have any for sale. You're, uh, the, you're but, the only one where you can get it I'm from, I'm the right? only one. All right. Okay. Well, that's enough advertising. But thank you again so much for listening. Freddie, do you want to say hi to the audience? Freddie. Freddie's Freddy sleeping now. Freddie's sleeping. See if I can get him to look at us. Freddie. Hi, Freddie. Bye-bye. Thank you.